Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardoCP.com. In our previous video, we showed you using the D-Lid Dimate tool to D-Lid our uh, Core i5-8600K processor. And I'm just going to show you the procedure we're going to go back through to uh, re-lid this. Nothing earth-shaking or groundbreaking here, but it's worth, uh, worth passing along a little bit of knowledge how we do things. I personally like to use these plastic razor blades. We buy those in Amazon and uh, actually also use uh, regular old uh, green scrubby pads that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere, right? And I cut those down so they're shaped a little bit different so there's not uh, a lot of overlap. But so we start out and go through and use the plastic razor blade to remove as much of the adhesive as we can that's down on the substrate. Once you get that working off, you can roll it off as well too. So it's... Uh, it's not that hard to do. Let's see once you get it moving there. With this plastic um, razor blade, you don't have to worry about cutting into the substrate at all. Let's pull the rest of that off. Let's move it out of the way, we'll brush it off. So now we got most of that off. We use 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol from MG Chemicals. So we can just get some of that down there on the surface. So now you're not gonna hurt it with this. And we can use our green scrubby pad And don't worry, man, you can press down on this as long as you're not on a really hard surface and worrying about breaking it behind it. Um, let's get all that down. So there you go. So now you can see we've gotten it almost perfectly clean. There's a little bit, let me see if I can get it in the glare. There's a little bit over here. A little more alcohol. You'll notice that 99% alcohol burns off very quickly since there's no water in it. So there you go. We'll need to do a little cleanup on that before we go back. But now that's perfect clean. And basically what we want to do is come back and do the same thing on the um, heat spreader as well. Let me wipe this Tim off here first. Now... Obviously, if you're going to be putting new Tim on, which we are, and we're going to use um, we're going to use Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra on this. We've had really good results in the past. We want to come back and clean off all that old Tim that's down in the pores of that metal as well. Obviously, using a plastic razor blade on this affords us the ability to not scratch things up or remove any material from the heat spreader. So now we got the majority of that moved off there. Then we want to come back with our 
Scrubby pad again. You can use alcohol or not. A little lubricant in there is never going to hurt anything. Okay, where we do want to make sure that we come back and absolutely use the scrubby pad is on the middle. And you do want to use some alcohol or some other kind of solvent here because we want to make sure that we get every bit of that Tim off the surface. This will allow our metal Tim to mate much better. And then we get metal to metal. So there you go. That's cleaned up all nice. We'll go back with a lint-free cloth as well to get anything else off of it. We don't want any particulate from the paper towel in there. Definitely want to clean that surface with alcohol as well too. Not so sure I'd use a green scrubby pad actually on the, the dye surface. You can, one thing about using the white paper towel is you can see if you're getting any Tim still off that, which there's none left. So there we go, we got our heat spreader uh, prepped and we've got our CPU prepped. Or well, kind of prepped. So lint, lint free cloth. Get all of our surfaces. So this is our D-Lid Dye Mate tool. Again, we've uh, machined out with the Dremel, the shoulders that are actually on the, uh, trying not to touch the surface there, that are on the edges of our uh, heat spreader. So we can turn that. And she fits down in there perfectly. So that's ready to go. Now we need to do is get our Tim prepped on our CPU. Okay, so let's uh, get our Cool Labs Liquid Ultra down onto our die. So we can spread that out. So let's get that a little bit there. Gotta be careful sometimes this didn't like to come off. So there's a little glob there. You gotta kinda work it around. There we go. I think we're looking pretty good there. Doesn't take much. All right, so we've also got these four little contacts over here. Now, I'm not honestly, I'm not sure what those are for, but I'm going to take just a tiny bit of red RTV that we're going to use to seal this back on. 
and I'm going to cover those up. So I've taken my big tube of RTV and got these syringes that we use and I've just filled it up with RTV. So we got that done. We're going to slide that aside for a minute. Get our D-Lid die mate die back out here. Again, we've uh, we've machined these out so our shoulders on this uh, integrated heat spreader were sitting there. We're already cleaned to good there. I'm going to give it, honestly, I'm going to clean it one more time. I was handling it just a little bit in between takes. I just want to feel perfectly good about that. If you wanted to, you could take the time and get that out of the space around the creases there. Not that it really makes any difference, but if you're OCD, it might be something you'd want to do. Okay, so this is our syringe. It's got a 14 gauge needle on it. These needles were a little bit too big for what we wanted to do. So uh, I actually took this, uh, hit it with a pair of pliers and crimped it down a little bit. So we're going to leave a bead around the outside edge of our heat spreader before we put it back together. And we're going to leave a little gap right about there so we get uh, room for gases to expand and contract underneath the heat spreader. So let's see how good a job I can do at this today. And honestly, this is not electrically conductive, so it's just about making it look kind of nice. It's the smallest caulk gun you'll ever use. And if you don't like the looks of it sticking out underneath the spreader like we showed you earlier on the 7600, you can obviously always go back and correct that and clean that up a little bit. There we go. Looks like we laid that down pretty well. I'm happy with that. That should give us a good seal. So as you notice, put a little tape on here keep these down. Um, as far as the design of this, I wish he would have put a, a room for our heads to work on that side. Honestly, I guess you don't really need to. Um, the countersunk heads on here, because they're not on this section. So this is why we worry about flipping it over, right? And hence again, the tape. So, because you, you've got to flip over one section or the other, right? So it's much harder to hold that in than it is to hold this in. So we are going to sandwich this over. And then we'll flip the whole unit over and start uh, screwing it down. Let's get it on there straight. You can feel it mate. So what we can do is... All right. Still in pretty good alignment there. So we've got a couple in to locate us. And uh, and giving our pressure points on that that die. We really don't need the two in the back for this. So We want to try to keep as even as possible across this. So I'm not putting hardly any pressure on it right now. Just until it feels snug. And that one's kind of tight. Let me see.
So here you go, we're all back in the jig. We're gonna let it stay in there for 24 hours to uh, make sure it gets a proper cure time on it and then we'll get it back on the test bench. This is Kyle Bennett with HardestCP.com.